Who was Dr. Royal Raymond Reif? And why are so many people still interested in the technology he spent many years of his life developing? In this documentary, you will learn about a brilliant and gifted man who developed the world's most powerful optical microscopes, which overcame the limitations of standard research microscopes, and who discovered a way to destroy deadly microorganisms using coordinative resonance. Though he died in 1971, interest in his discoveries did not. Royal Raymond Reif was a handsome and gifted young man. He had an inquisitive mind and explored many interests. He was born May 16, 1888, in the state of Nebraska to Royal Raymond Reif Sr. of Ohio and Ida May Cheney of Creston, Iowa. Dr. Reif was their second child, an older sibling having died in infancy. Ida May became ill and died eight months after his birth in 1889. After her death, because Reif Sr. was working 14 to 16 hours a day as a mechanical engineer, he took his son to his sister, Nina Culver Reif Dryden. She said about this difficult situation, I raised him and brought him up as though he was my own. He lived with her from the time he was eight months of age until the year 1905. At this time, he had an interest in becoming a medical doctor and pursued this dream. He went to Johns Hopkins University to begin his medical training, and after some study, he found that he had a greater interest in the field of bacteriology. In this field, he did a great deal of work, which included photographing many specimens for the University of Heidelberg. Because of the great contributions Reif made to Heidelberg University, he was given an honorary doctorate of parasitology in 1914. Because his studies of bacteria required intensive use of microscopes, Dr. Reif developed an interest in optics and began studying in that field as well. This interest led him to New York's Zeiss Works. Zeiss microscopes were world-renowned even at that time, and Dr. Reif studied from 1904 to 1908 with Hans Leukel, the senior optics engineer. In 1846, Carl Zeiss set up a workshop for precision mechanics and optics in Jena, Germany. Twenty years later, he went into partnership with Ernst Abbe, whose theory of microscope image formation led to greatly improved microscopes. These innovations made Zeiss a world leader in optics and made it the logical place for Dr. Reif to study microscope and lens technology. With his scientific brilliance and knowledge of optics and bacteriology, Dr. Reif was poised to begin an incredible journey of discovery. This journey began with his move to California, where he settled in Point Loma. Dr. Reif met Mamie Quinn. He fell deeply in love with her. Reif liked poetry and would write her little poems to express how he felt about her. There was a great deal of prejudice in those days but this didn't make any difference in the way they felt about each other. She was a great support to him in all his endeavors. They married in 1912. For some unknown reason, they were never able to have any children. Their marriage lasted for 45 years until her death in 1957. From 1915 to 1920, Reif worked in his private lab identifying and classifying disease-causing microorganisms. By the end of 1920, he was frustrated with the standard research microscopes because of the limitations in magnification. At this time, he was working on cancer, and the limitations of magnification were stopping him from finding the viral cause of the disease. Standard research microscopes at the time, like those manufactured today, could only magnify a microorganism up to 2,500 times diameter. Dr. Reif felt that with this limitation, he would never be able to find the true cause of many diseases. At about this time, Reif began his work using frequency instruments. 
He told a reporter in a May 6, 1938 Evening Tribune article that he also experimented with electrical stimuli on various microorganisms, and he noticed the individualistic differences in the chemical constituents of the diseased organisms, saw the indications of electrical characteristics, and observed the electrical polarities in the organisms. Random speculation on the observation suddenly stirred in his mind a startling, astonishing thought. What would happen if I subjected these organisms to different electrical frequencies, he wondered. With this revolutionary thought, he began to gather all the necessary instruments, such as standard research microscopes, frequency generators to produce the high frequencies he would work with, test tubes, and bacteriological equipment, cages for guinea pigs and other animals he would be working with, cameras for photographing specimens, and machine shop machinery to build his own designs. Reif met Lee de Forest, the father of modern vacuum tubes, who was an important contributor to early radio technology. He helped to build many of Reif's early frequency generators. Way back in 1920, when, of course, radio was really in its infancy, I worked a number of years with Lee de Forest, which is a good man, and uh, he's a daddy, you know. Reif found through arduous experimentation, looking through the microscope as he applied various frequencies that he was able to kill these microorganisms, proving his theory to be correct. In order to determine which frequencies would kill a particular organism, it was absolutely essential that he be able to see the organisms in a living state so that he could observe the effect of various frequencies in real time. Reif later called a frequency which killed an organism its MOR, or Mortal Oscillatory Rate. As an example, it's, it's worked out, my theory was worked out on a, on a basic principle of what we term coordinative resonance. Now we take and we put a slide of a certain chemical or material under the, uh, the petrographical micropolariscope, which is that second microscope down there. I didn't build that, I designed it. Now, we have what we call a coordinative resonance, you see. We have a chemical here, we have a frequency. All right. We will take and change those to two tuning forks that's pitched to the C absolute. We put the other one down there, we strike this one, the other one resonates. It's coordinative resonance owing to the chemical constituent. And we create that electronically, the same as we determine what material is under that microscope by color and the index of light as we rotate it between the analyzer and polarizer as the color index fades from one color to the other, the angle of refraction of that crystal and so on, we can tell. It's coordinated resonance. The same as I say, you take two tuning forks that's pitched to the C or an A absolute, you strike one, the other one resonates. So we're showing an electronic frequency through the tissues of the body that simply devitalizes the back. Reif also described how he found all the frequencies that would kill the various microorganisms.